Thank you for staying with us. The federal government has faltered the decision of some state governors to permit the reopening of worship centers amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. The chairman of the presidential tax force PTF on COVID-19, Boss Mustafa, warned that such decisions could have serious health implications. He also said the ban on gatherings of more than 20 people remains prohibited. And joining us to discuss this is Taiwo Akinami, a legal practitioner via phone, and also John Wesley, a political analyst via Zoom. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining on the show tonight. Thank you for having me. Uh, John, John Wesley, good to see you and to know that you're, you're keeping safe and staying well. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mr. Mr. Akinami, let me, let me start yeah. with you. The federal government is urging states to reconsider a decision in relaxing the lockdown. Now, should this even be a consideration at such a time? Well, um, it is important that we look at these things in perspectives. Okay. Now, you, you are talking about, uh, if you are talking about COVID-19, the spread and the rest of it, I think the issue we need to address is the seriousness of government in addressing what is on ground. Now, this is a country of 200 million people, approximately. As of today, we've not done 25,000 tests. So, so if you are not testing, how do you know the extent of the spread? Now, the reason why you keep saying Lagos is epicenter, epicenter is because Lagos has done more tests than other states. So my position is that as of today, this so-called pandemic has not even become an, an epidemic in Nigeria. So it's global pandemic that has not even gotten to the level of epidemic in Nigeria. So why do you keep shutting everywhere down? You don't just meet at a presidential tax force and say that people, we should continue to shut down. States should be allowed to look at the peculiarity of their situation and take a decision. The Lagos state government has been on top of, the, of, of its game in addressing this issue. So if the Lagos state government is thinking about, which, I, uh, because I live in Lagos state, so I want to speak for Lagos state. Yeah. So if the Lagos state government is saying that they are looking at uh, conditions and um, rules and regulations under which public, uh, public uh, gathering can, can resume, other which places of worship can reopen, I don't see why the federal government should always come like the big brother to stop the state from functioning. This is not federalism. This is unitary state, you know, masquerading as a federal state. You remember when this whole, this whole uh, uh, epidemic so-called broke out? Now, the state, Lagos state government was monitoring and was looking and was taking decision on the basis of development on ground. Then the federal government came from nowhere after sleeping for so long and came with the position that there must be a lockdown. So we need to be careful about the, about the way we take decisions and about we play tight with people's lives. All right, John Wesley, let me come to you now. We're seeing an increasing number of COVID-19 cases in the country, and some states are relaxing the lockdown measures put in place to limit the spread of the virus. What can you largely attribute this to? Uh, uh, first, I, I like to mention the, you see, um, I must say it's a good time that I am actually talking about these on the show. Uh, first and foremost, we must acknowledge the fact that this is real. I've lost, I mean, very close people to me to this virus. And so when we want to talk about this virus, I take it extremely seriously. I mean, it's no joke. We are talking of a virus that is a droplet. It is, if, if the federal government is saying that we are not taking chances as regards this, Yes, there might not be, uh, there might not be uh, provisions enough, you know, to carry out the testing as it should be. But the truth of the matter is, on a daily basis, people get infected with this virus. I mean, on a daily basis. And so, if the federal government is saying that for one reason or the other, this uh, certain group of people, the churches, the mosques, and what have you, should just, at least for now, for now, do away with worship and all of that. I mean, it's, it's, it's not out of place. It's not out of place. And we have seen in other parts of the world where these things are not being handled according to states. 
it's not been handled according to whether you are from a, you are from Chicago or you are from Illinois or what have you. It's it's been taken head on absolutely. So I think it is very important that we should take note of these things. And it is also very essential to mention that this is not something that will go away very quickly. It's not some, you can imagine if we say that because um, we, 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 want to, we want to open up churches or for one reason or the other because we, we have to celebrate uh, the Ramadan, people need to gather in a mosque and all of that. You can't imagine what happens eventually. For instance, if you are gathering in a mosque, people will make prayers. And then, you so when they are making their prayers, people do not just make their prayers without touching one another. People make their prayers by carrying, there is this uh, little egg or uh, uh, little jug that they carry in making the ablution. In, 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 in the northern part of Nigeria, it is not that there are enough of such uh, jug for people to use. It is not as if people can bring theirs from their home. People come to the mosque, they pick from one person to another. And then we have also noted that this is a virus that, from touching alone, you could contact the virus. So it is, it is not out of place to take all necessary measures. Okay. Yes, the federal government is not having all the necessary capacity to put this, you know, into flight. We will not say as a result of that, we should not do the things that we can actually do. We will not say, it, it's not going to cost us anything to social distance. All right, all right, John to, Wesley, America, I'm going to come to you. I'll, now, I'll come to you in a bit, John Wesley. Just hold your thoughts right there, John Wesley. Now, um, Taiwo, let, let me come to you now. I mean, let's put things in proper perspective, like you rightly said. <laughs> President Mohamed Buhari, in his earlier addresses, put a ban on large social and religious gatherings in Abuja, Lagos, and Ogun states and Kano. But now we're seeing some states taking the decision and lifting the ban on religious gatherings. Now, isn't this counterproductive in the efforts to forestall the spread of the virus? And then we're seeing no. such a rush about religious no. um, gatherings being going back to, to, to normal. Why this well, rush? I don't know why the focus is on religious gathering, religious gathering. Hmm. When I listen to the address of the Lagos State Government, the Lagos State Government has not been erratic about the situation. The Lagos State Government says within its space of two, three weeks... Beyond Lagos State, Barrister Taiwo, no, be, no, be, beyond no. Lagos State, we, we, yes. have, we have many states right now who are, who are, yes. who are lifting but up their ban the on religious... This is the point. Yes. This is the point. There is a limit to which you can lock down people's life. It, 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 it's not going to work that way. There's a limit to which you can lock people's, down, people's lives down. Now, if you look at nations where, locked, even in America, America has had the highest number of people that have been infected and the highest number of people that have died. They are coming to the realization that their lives cannot be locked down forever. What needs to happen? is for government to be accountable to people as to the actions they are taking to solve this problem. I've just given you a, a clear instance. Two okay. million people yeah. in Nigeria, 200 million people in Nigeria, only 25,000, according to government record, or less, have been tested. When are we going to finish the testing? Till Jesus comes, so there are fundamental I issues. I think, I think it's, more than that, it's, more than that, it's more than that figure. Over 30-something thousand have been tested. It's more than the 25,000 figure you just pointed so, out. So yeah. this is the question. Whether it's, this is a country of 200 million. Yes. Now, how many, even if you have tested 35 or 50,000, the way we are going, when are we going to finish testing? Okay. So I, the I, question I, I'm making, the point I'm making is this. This is the point I'm making, please. Yes, I will. I'm not opposed. I'm not in favor or religious gathering, or shopping malls, and all of this has been opened, and I'm not against it. Okay. I'm just saying that in taking any decision in this direction, states should be allowed to, to, to take responsibility. We cannot continue in the name of trying to, trying to, trying to uh, 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 prevent the state from doing their work, or in the name of the fear of the, of the of the of the virus or the COVID-19, and the federal government becomes the big headmaster that does not allow states to operate. I don't think it should work that way. That is not federalism. That is unitary system of government. All right, John Wesley, a strong advisory from the PTF is that large gatherings beyond 20 persons remain restricted and should be adhered to. 
But with these states leaving the ban on religious gatherings, do you see full compliance to this measure? Because that is very critical. Full compliance, social distancing, how do they hope to achieve this in going back to their various places of religious worships and gathering? Benny, you know, I would always say this. You see, we, we are a set of difficult people and uh, it is rather unfortunate that we allow sentiments and our emotions come to play when we are addressing certain issues. When we talk about religion, it is not as if most of us in this part of the world are so, so, you know, well behaved according to the religion that we profess. So when people begin to advocate for gatherings and all of that, I begin to wonder if it is, there is more to it. Although I will mention we have seen cases of certain people come out to see one or two things, which has made it obvious that these gatherings are also for businesses. See, the truth of the matter is this. We know that people will flout others. Even when there was a lockdown in Lagos, people flouted others, people bribed their way through and all of that. I keep saying this. We all must take responsibility. Okay. The truth of the matter is, if you have someone that is close to you or someone very close to somebody that you know who has been infected by the virus and who also died, it will be clear enough to speak. Oh, you I see, when see. somebody comes up I'm, and I'm taking what you just said. Place, we all we all should take responsibility. And finally, this is to you, Mr. Very Tyro. Very what, what, are the, yeah. what, what do you think are the other possible methods that can actually be put in place by the government to ensure strict adherence and compliance That's when so, people so, have to go so, about their normal lives, like you are conversing, Paul? Okay, so you see, this COVID-19 is not invention. It's not the invention of Nigerians. Yeah. There's a way this problem is being solved globally. Tracing, testing, tracing, testing, testing, testing. Uh, and... and, and Palliatives for the poor, the poorest of the poor, and the middle class. Everybody should be catered for. So which one is the Nigerian government doing? Are we testing? Are we, are we tracing? Are we bringing palliatives? We are not doing all of that. And we're not having that conversation. We keep saying that uh, places should not be opened up. The question is not about opening up a place or not. The question is about... What steps are being taken to ensure that people's life can return to normal? All that right. those who are poor, the ones of wood and drops of water, can have access to water, eat water, drink. That that those who have come in contact with those who are infected, they can be traced and go get into isolation. That those who are infected can get treatment. That those that those who are now aware of their status can be aware of their status. In what, in which of those has the government exerted apart from legal states? Legal practitioner Barrister Taiwa Akin, Akin Lami, thank you very much for your time and for joining us on Plus Politics. And also to you, John Wesley, social and political analyst. Thank you for your time on the show tonight. Thank you so much, Arthur. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Do stay with us. It is not a riot scene. It is 3 p.m., the close of a market in an area of Lagos, the Sakatinibu Market, Victoria Island, Lagos, as the economy opens in the city. The time is 2.19. We'll show that plaza very soon. The time is 2.19. It's week three since the COVID-19 lockdown gradually became eased. This is what some Nigerian markets now look like. No hand washing, no entry. I can wash your hand. I can wash your hand, sir. What you are doing here, because we as a union, as a group of people, we have crowd coming in here. If you, are, if you, if you stay here for the next five minutes, you see make around announcement about customers, buy and go. So customers prefer to come and buy and stay and maybe look around. But it's our time when you congest. We close shop before three o'clock. Before three or three sharp, you won't see anybody here again. And once we close, everybody leaves the vicinity. We don't need to see anybody around this place. Half of the people that are making sales here, we have to push them 
away. Some will come on Wednesday, some will come on Friday, some will come on Monday. Not everybody that comes today that will come on Wednesday. Within the week, traders take turns to come to the market. Across boards, the general complaint is that of low sales. Market no day, even though if we come out, the day will come out, three o'clock they ask us to close. So we just demand the share. The business has not been moving in as much as dollar is increasing. So even this one we are selling now, we are just selling. We don't know how much we are going to buy next time, from 350 to 455. So we are just trying to sell something to at so that we can be eating. And buyers too are not left out. They too share their predicaments. We are still not safe, you know. So we have to continue to practice, you know, social distancing. We are trying our best to do as we've been instructed by the government to use the face marks to wash our hands um, regularly and also to use um, the hand sanitizers. As COVID-19 reaches, communities spread with almost 6,000 Nigerians down with the virus. The call is for everyone to take personal hygiene more seriously. From Lagos, Nigeria, Mary Chinda reporting for Plus TV Africa. Here is my take. The tax exemption decision taken by Governor Ben Ayade of Cross River is one that is laudable and also one that is coming at the right time. And I alone do not hold this opinion. Speaking of this decision, also a renowned economist and lecturer in the Department of Economics, University of Calabar, Dr. Peter Ubi, said the development will enhance investment and become a catalyst for sustainable economic development in the state. I remember when the budget of 1.1 trillion naira was presented by the governor in late 2019, many respondents saying it was unrealistic as its debts increased year by year. For instance, in 2016, the total debt stock of the state stood at about 163 billion naira. In 2017, 176.87 billion naira. In 2018, 225.5 billion naira. And as of June 2019, the debt stock is at 227.6 billion naira. It is believed that with this, 90% of the budget will be borrowed. And from the perspective of the common man, it is a great way for the state government to show that it cares for its citizens. Now, the governors of other states should consider the decision, especially in these hard times, just by way of palliatives. However, thinking of the economic implications, I believe it could reduce the state's internally generated revenue, as many economists have pointed out. And a state such as Cross River, who from 2009 to 2018 has only received $377 billion from the Federation account allocation and generated a total of $505.6 billion naira, might not be in the best place to make such a sacrifice. Nevertheless, it is welcomed by the people and would help them survive this perilous times we're in. And a strong advisory from the PTF is that large gatherings beyond 20 persons remain restricted and should be adhered to but with some state governments lifting the ban on religious gatherings, the complexities of these religious houses in strict adherence to these measures is of great concern and the monitoring very critical. I am particularly about congregational gatherings. Large gatherings would expose even the 20% that we have been trying to protect. I urge our sub-nationals to really reconsider their decisions in allowing for large gatherings to take place until we're fully prepared. I also urge the state governments to ensure compliance to restrictions guidelines. It is imperative for each of us to take personal and collective responsibility for the containment of the spread of COVID-19. And that's all for tonight. Plus Politics returns next week Monday, same time. Have a great weekend and until we meet again, remember, stay safe and be well.